Our communities have never been more important as they have been over the last year. What trends have you seen on Nextdoor and trends that may have surprised even you? Yeah, thank you, Emily. It's great to be here. So next door, the place you go to plug into the neighborhoods that matter to you. What are the trends we've seen? People have come to us for trusted information. We've worked a lot with different public agencies, you know, US government, uh, UK government. They come to give and get help. I want to say that didn't surprise me, but it surprised me a little how much people leaned into that need to give help. And then finally, now they're coming really to build online connections that take them offline too. We have a sneak peek of a new insights report that's hitting the presses on Monday, but we see things like people have become accidental savers. Um, they're still a bit nervous about what the economy will mean, particularly if they're female or living in a rural area. That said, they've shifted a lot to e-commerce uh, and they're doing things like food delivery and grocery online delivery, and it doesn't look like that's going to end. Right. This is part of your Nextdoor Insight series where you are learning more from the incredible content on the platform. People are buying more cars. They want to go to restaurants, but they're also ordering more. You know, tell us more about what you can learn from the information and how valuable that is. Yeah. So remember, today Nextdoor is in almost one in three households in the United States and in 11 countries. And so that gives us access to a huge population to go out and survey, to find out what's really happening and you know, how are those trends shifting. And so as we do that, number one, we're tapping into a really unique audience. One of the things I love about Nextdoor is they typically haven't been to maybe other social media networks. You know, 50% have not been to Twitter or Pinterest in the last month. Even 20% haven't been to Facebook. And so that gives us a very interesting angle. And as you noted, um, things like food delivery apps, so of course we saw a huge surge. Doesn't look like it's gonna stop. People have really enjoyed that trend. It's definitely younger population that's doing more of it, but the big jump we see coming is the 35 and above who wanna stay on that food delivery trend. Similarly with grocery shopping, um, people still wanna do curbside pickup. So they're not gonna retrench back into the store. Um, and in fact, Texas is the state where we see the biggest surge in that with almost 77% of neighbors saying they want to keep up curbside pickup. Now, as wonderful as the community building has been, not all neighbors are nice, and there have, has been a problem with racism and discrimination on the platform. You're announcing this new policy. How confident are you that you can get this problem under control when companies with massive resources like Facebook, like Twitter, haven't been able to do that? So you're right, it's a problem we take really seriously and it's gonna always be evolving. There will be no end to it because it is just a fact of how neighborhoods and, and neighbors interact with one another. That said, we do believe that we can continue to cultivate a much more welcoming platform. We started way back, you'll recall, I think I've talked to you about Kindness Reminder, deeply steeped in social science and it's all about slowing people down by putting a little pop-up in the app if you're writing something that we think isn't going to cultivate kindness in your neighborhood. We've taken that one step further just in the last few weeks with an anti-racism notification. So if you're posting phrases like all lives matter or blue lives matter as a retort to someone saying black lives matter, we're helping educate why those can be very hurtful and are not at all welcoming, particularly to our black neighbors. And then just today, we've taken the step on banning a lot of hate speech and hate symbols on the platform because we want to stay out in front of this. And we certainly hope that other platforms will follow because we think this is how we build much stronger, more welcoming communities over time. The anti-racism notification rolled out a couple of weeks ago, as I understand it. Are you seeing an actual reduction in use of racist language as a result? We, we do know for sure that we have an impact when we roll these things out. Kindness Reminder saw about a 30% reduction or actually change in the post itself. Because often people don't even realize that they're erring into something that comes across as offensive, comes across as hurtful. And just that quick reminder is enough to have people change what they're writing. And for sure, what we okay. do know is that a lot of the neighbors, the black neighbors on our platform, for example, when they see us take a stand in the product itself, that's what really makes a difference and really starts to help lay down the groundwork that this is a platform that welcomes everyone. 
Facebook has been testing its own neighborhood product. Does that concern you, especially coming out of a pandemic when maybe we won't need uh, our, our next door app as, as much as we did when we were stuck at home um, and just needed that uh, outdoor engagement? Yeah, no, I, I think locals never be more important. And in fact, many of the trends help the platform. Think about those people who would have been leaving home to go work um, maybe in a city for five days a week. And now they're doing some sort of hybrid of work from home alongside shifting to a different neighborhood. So in that regard, Nextdoor continues to stay very front of mind. I think we've also just become a daily habit for people, recognizing that there's huge utility whether it's that near-term need, like help me find a plumber, help me find a great babysitter, or wanting to keep building on community. I think everyone recognized during the pandemic this power of local. And I think Nextdoor is really set up to be the only platform that can do this, right? Our graph is a local graph. It's not a friends and family graph or a professional graph. And so we are the place that people turn to when they care about the local perspective or when they want to find out what's just happening around them. Um, you were the CFO of Square for many years, so we know you know how to turn a company into a massive money maker. Um, can you give us an update on you know, how much revenue the business is generating and your plans to get closer to potentially an IPO? Sure. So for sure, the last couple of years have been very good to Nextdoor in terms of our overall growth rate. In 2020, our DAO, our daily active users, grew over 50%. And that's our North Star metric, because that's both how many new people are coming to the platform, but are they finding us to be that daily habit? With that, of course, revenue continues to build because we become much more useful for advertisers. I talked earlier about how unique the platform is. And so more and more advertisers are finding Nextdoor as the place to get their message out. And of course, we also work extremely well for small businesses. So not just the big local businesses like a Walmart or a Home Depot, but also the mom and pop on the street corner, maybe the local coffee shop, the local Pilates class. Um, so revenue has tracked with that down number um, and we really like the momentum we're seeing overall in the business right now. Is an IPO in the cards, Sarah? Well, could we raise money and put it to good use? Absolutely. <laughs> Um, are we ready to be a public company? We're working on that, and I think we're there. Um, I know what it takes to run okay. the gauntlet, particularly that first year. Um, the how we do it uh, remains to be seen. I don't want to really get too caught okay. up there because ultimately it's about can we be a great public company.